Hey everybody, welcome back. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. Wanted to uh, respond to a lot of response to this video I just did about the constellations, uh, the clock in the sky. I want to go over some of that. And um, also a lot of you left comments from um, Brother Franchot Pearson's channel asking, telling me, to get in touch with him. So I did leave him my email so you guys know that. And um, yeah, he had a strong reaction to the to the constellation vision video dream I did. Um, and so I wanted, so what's very interesting is I just was sent another video and I also saw it in the comments. Um, another sister, I think her name's Stephanie. Um, her channel is uh, Blessed Hope One One Seven. She sent me uh, left a link with a video that she had a dream about the constellation of the clock. <laughs> back in April, and she didn't even know what it was. She had no idea. Most people don't know there's a clock up there. It's a very small constellation. And <clears throat> I certainly didn't. And, I, and the person who sent me the constellation of the clock after I did that video, talking about how I saw this clock in 1994 in a vision um, with like, that was when I saw Crown 22. Uh, that's when I saw the lottery that turned into the understanding it was Noah's Ark for the rapture. That's where I saw the Statue of Liberty, the balloons, the family reunion, all these things that pointed to, to what later I understood was the rapture of the church. In that, I had also seen this clock. Now, I've mentioned it now and then over the years okay but this has just turned into what i believe god meant all all along that we're getting to that place where the prophetic is going to be manifested into the physical which is the rapture of the church um now sister kim fisher is the one that sent me uh that picture of the constellation. Okay. Now her channel is called Kim Fisher and she gets a lot of prophetic dreams that a lot have been coming true lately. Again, a lot of people's things are coming true like rapid pace right now. Um, <clears throat> a few of you were a little concerned about the whole thing with this, the constellations <clears throat> and uh, so I want to make that clear that astrology is from the devil and astronomy is from God who created the stars in the heavens. And he, uh, you know, and Amos 5.8 says, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turns the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark and night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. So it says right here, God made the seven stars and Orion and in Job 9, 9, it says he made the bear Orion and the Pleiades, which is the seven stars and the chambers of the South. And, you know, there's a lot more to all of this. I mean, there's the gospel, the story of the gospel and the stars, I and mean, it gets deep. God did this. And then on top of that, you can see in Genesis 1 14 and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So in <clears throat> seasons is from Moed, meaning divine appointments. So we know that he created them for a reason. And, you know, they start the month at the, the sighting of the new moon. Um, at least that's what they're supposed to do. That's what we're all supposed to do. That's what God ordained us for do. But 
everybody's calendar's off, you know, and speaking of calendars, the tour calendar is pretty accurate a lot of the time. Israel's once in a while they're on sync. I remember last year they were pretty in sync. Right now they're not, but the tour calendar um, shows us that we're in the seventh month and that this Feast of Tabernacles is about to start. Okay, so the, the, the eve of Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacle, begins tomorrow, Monday, the 11th. Now, let me, hold on a second. Okay, I wanted to pull this up. I think I might have said tomorrow, Monday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Today is the 10th of October. And tomorrow, the 11th, I'll show you. It says the eve of Sukkot. I don't, I hope you can see that. But anyway, so it's the, uh, the eve of Sukkot. Um, Feast of Tabernacles, and it goes through the eight, 19th is Shimini Atzeret on the 22nd, uh, on the Torah calendar on the 19th of October. That would be the last day, and Hashanah Rabbah is day seven, Shimini Atzeret is day eight. And it's also known as the last great day. And in the, in John chapter 11, when Jesus goes to heal, raise Lazarus from the dead, you have Mary and Martha are talking to him and I forget it's Mary or Martha, but he, Jesus is asking her questions, you know, and she says, well, yeah, I believe you're going to, you'll, you know, you'll raise him at the last great day, bring him to life the last great day. And Jesus is trying to say, no, I'm going to, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the way I'm going to raise him right now because I am God. I am the resurrection. And so he's a type and shadow, of course, of the dead in Christ rising at the rapture. So, um, I say that to say this, is that the term the last great day could be pointing to the last, this is what they call Sh Shemini Atzeret, the last day, the last day. So uh, again, that's on October 19th. And, um, you know, this whole thing with the, the clock, if you just look at it, like, first of all, why is God bringing so much attention to it? It's because God wants to highlight this right now. It's all about him, his clock, what time it is for him. We know he's coming back. I believe he's coming back so soon that he's bringing attention to this clock, which, of course, is symbolic of watching because it's called a watch. Got a watch right here, watching like a pun, a play on words, and what time it is. So today being October 10th, and you had those, the full moon, yes, full moon, 100% yesterday and today. Uh, was God pointing to the rapture today? Not unless we leave in a couple hours. Was he pointing to Sukkot? This Feast of Tabernacles? He could have been. And what I know he's saying is that I'm coming sooner than you think. God is highlighting the clock, the watching in the heavens and in our spirits. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that this another sister now had a dream about that clock. I mean, that's another witness. That's another confirmation. Uh, she didn't even know what it was. And I will leave a link to her video. Um, 
in the box below. And I want to remind some of you and maybe tell you who don't know that, you know, Jesus said to watch because you don't know what hour he's coming. He said to watch so that we would know when he comes. Because if he had told us when, we were, when he was coming, why would we watch? Why would he tell us to watch? We already know when you're coming. We don't need to watch. It's like uh, the enemy uses this to really confuse people. But the reason we're watching is because he didn't want to come out and tell us exactly when he's coming, but he wants us to know by the spirit when he's coming. Why did he speak in parables all the time? He wanted those who had the understanding in the spirit to hear what he's saying in the spirit. In fact, the Bible, Revelations, talk, Revelation talks about, you know, that the churches need to hear what the Spirit is saying. And the Spirit and the Bride say, come Lord Jesus. Because there's things that you need to hear from God that you're only going to hear in the Spirit. The Word of God tells you what you need to know, who He is. Jesus is the Word. John 1, I am the Word. The Word is, it was made flesh, okay? But because we are now filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've received Christ as your Savior by believing in who he is and what he did on the cross for you when he died and shed his blood for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day and died that we would be could be saved if we would believe for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whomsoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And those who do not believe in him will perish and will have everlasting life in hell. They will have everlasting death. And, you know, the people need to know that too. It's not just about getting saved. It's not like if you don't get saved, you're going to be okay. No, you're going to be in hell forever. It's a place you don't want to be where there will be forever torment, torture, separation from God. You know, I, I was talking to a, a guy at a cashier at a store once because I like to talk about Jesus when I can. And um, I forget what was happening, but I sort of made a joke because he was, something was funny going on. And I was telling him about Jesus. And he said, I said, you know, have you ever, have you heard of, have you heard of this before? And he said, yeah. And he's, but you know, whatever God wants is fine. And I said, well, no, I mean, it's not, it doesn't work that way. There's a hell. And he said, well, um, I got some, I got some friends there. <laughs> so that's all right. I'm like, uh, let me straighten out your thinking a little bit here. You're not going to be drinking beer with your friends in hell. Okay. You're going to be so tortured and alone and on fire with your flesh burning that, um, you're not even gonna be able to drink water, much less beer. Okay. We're talking about eternal scorching heat and thirst that nothing can quench forever tortured. Okay. You're not going to have friends. you are be an isolation tank on fire. I mean, I've heard things where your, your limbs burn and then, and, and then they get put back on and they burn again. I mean, it's torture. Okay. So, if you're out there, you need to, you need to hear the urgency. It's time to get saved. Jesus said, I am the only way to the father. No man comes to me. No man comes to the father except through me. Jesus said, no man comes to the father except through Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby a must, a man must be saved. Acts 4, 12. There's no other name. Only the name of Jesus, only the spotless, blameless lamb of God who died and was tortured on that cross because of the evil in mankind. And he let it happen. He didn't have to let it happen, but he let his, he let his sweat turn into blood. He let them torture him. He got asphyxiated. It's slow asphyxiation, slow death. While they were laughing and mocking him. 
because he said he was the king, the son of God, king of the Jews. Are you mocking the truth today or are you believing it? Time to stop mocking the truth because time is short. Time is of the essence right now. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is on me right now. Time is short. I wasn't planning one thing I'm saying in this video, not one thing. I said, but I got to say something here. <clears throat> and for those who think watching for the Lord is crazy, you're crazy. Let me tell you how God felt when they did not recognize him. But when he came the first time, you think he doesn't want us to know when he's coming? Can it take a long time, years of watching? Yeah. Is it easy? No. Is there a crown of righteousness for those who love his appearing? Yes. The Bible tells us that. Why? I realize now why, because there's a lot of warfare in watching for the Lord. There's a lot of mockery. Do you think Noah felt, you know, fun? It was fun for him to be mocked constantly. It had never even rained before. And he's telling everyone, not only is it going to rain, but there's going to be a flood. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, right. That's pretty much what people are saying right now. Luke 1940, Jesus wept over Jerusalem and rebuked the Jews for not knowing the day of their visitation. He wept and he rebuked them. I, I rebuke those who mock watching for the Lord. Believe me, I'm tired of it myself mocked for everything he's the one who said watch what, what are you thinking to do watch for what you're gonna have to look at some times and seasons and things and dates on calendars look at you know you, <laughs> you got to show up at the right time he rebuked the jews for not knowing the day of their, of their visitation well, why didn't they know the day of their visitation he it's in the it was in the bible He prophesied it in Daniel. And we're about to finish that prophecy, the Daniel 70th week. Seven years of tribulation on this earth after the rapture, after the age of grace ends. The age of grace will end at the rapture. You're not going to get saved the same way. You're going to have to lay down your life and get killed for Jesus because they're going to kill you. And the mark of the beast, they're going to be chasing you down to take the mark of the beast. What do you think is going on right now? They want to turn everything digital in December in America. Digital, so why? So they can put it in your right hand or forehead according to Revelation 13. And if you take that, you will go to hell. That says you will be condemned forever. And if you come to Christ and you believe in Jesus after the rapture and the tribulation, you will have to be killed for your faith. Okay, sudden death, sudden glory. Just think of it that way if you're here then because you were warned now. There's still a way out. It's still time to get on the ark because we're still here. As long as we're here, there's time to get on the ark. As long as you're breathing, you can still get saved. But do you want to wait? Because once the rapture takes place, man, Woo, you are not going to see the grace of God, the comfort of God, the love of God. The Bible says that people will turn against each other. Families will kill each other for food to eat. There's going to be cannibalism. They're going to be eat. Why, why do you think all of the food plants have been burning on fire this year? One after another. Why do you think? They are trying, the Antichrist, the Bible says the Antichrist runs the world system. And his hour of power is coming up very soon, okay? So why do you think the food shortages are all in the headlines right now? All the head, they're saying you're going to actually starve soon. I don't know when, it's winter, months. Some places have empty shelves, not everyone. We don't hear in LA right now, 
But once it happens, once that food's gone, boom. The Lord was showing me the other day how fast it takes a couple days for the for the food shortages. It would just take a couple days if the if the stores lacked food. Do you know how fast people will come out on the streets with their guns and knives? Oh yeah, they'll kill you this fast to get some money to eat. Okay, there's a lot of evil people around, walking around right now that you wouldn't have imagined would act like that if push came to shove. And the world is full of it. Wide is the gate to destruction. Narrow is the gate to Christ, to life. And few find it. How sad is that? How sad is that? Few find it. Find Jesus today if you haven't. The Bible says you are saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of eternal life that he wants to give you if you could admit that you even need a Savior. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior and look at your take a look at yourself We are all sinners. We are all have literally a Lucifer nature That only Jesus Christ can deliver us from and You will only be completely delivered of your carnal mind or carnal nature Either at death or at the rapture when you get your glorified body that is when we shall see the Lord face to face and you will be perfect the way he made you. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness and death, separation, no more loneliness, no more divorce, no more loss, no more psychological problems, no more torment in your emotions. No more financial problems, medical problems. Wow, <laughs> wow. Why would anyone pass that up? There's a reason some people will. It's because they're too proud to admit they need anyone because they want to be in control. Yeah, like I'm in control, man. Don't boss, don't boss me around. I don't, I'm not, I don't need you. I'm not gonna humble myself. I'm in control. I call the shots around here. That's what it is. It's that Lucifer nature, that pride that does not want to submit to a, a, to a greater power, which is God, Jesus Christ, Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahweh. Yahweh the Father, Yeshua the Son. All you're going to be left with if, if you want to go your way or the highway is death and destruction. And tribulation before you go to hell. So, yeah, that's... I can't help watch. I can't help watching. It's just like, I can't help it because I want to be with him. This place is growing sicker by the day. This world is a sad and sick place. So with war looming on the horizon, nuclear war is about to break out. I had the dream. My father said, Gigi, people have no idea how soon World War Three is. The 21-0 America dream I had about the god's fury with this country that it would be basically brought to nothing all of this is what god has given me really that i mean this is the crux of my of my calling since i've been on youtube the prophetic of what's gonna happen to america you know the the war coming and watching for the lord and so I take the heat, I take the persecution, I take the mockery 
because I do it all for the glory of God. Because you know what? Who cares what man thinks? Are you going to limit what God wants you to do because of what man thinks about you? Are you going to be intimidated about what somebody thinks about you? And, and forfeit everything God has for you, whatever it is, in that situation, because you're going to bow down to man and fear man and please man instead of pleasing God, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But you can take that freedom and fly with it, or you can hide and not do what God tells you to do and run and hide. And you won't feel the freedom that God has for you. It doesn't mean you're going to hell if you live in fear. If, you've sa if you're saved, if you believe in Jesus Christ, he saved you. He made a way. He gave you eternal life, okay? But there's different things on this earth, different places we can take we can go, we can obey the Lord and walk by faith and not by sight, according to 2 Corinthians or Corinthians 5, 1, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's why watching for the Lord can look crazy because we're walking by faith. And what the spirit is revealing things to people, the spirit of God is what's revealing this clock in heaven to me, to, to the sister, to anyone else out there who's seen this or to whatever it is, the spirit of God is showing you, you need to run with it because the spirit of God, that's the Holy spirit. We don't want to quench the spirit. And yes, when you, when you, when you go forward with the Holy spirit is showing you, you have to, do it at the price of being mocked. Okay, that's why I'm saying all this stuff because you know I take a lot, I take a lot of heat, but I don't always talk about any of it <clears throat> because I don't, you know, I I, I, I just got to give what God gives me to give, and that's sometimes all I can handle in the moment. It's just this is what I got to show you, and um, so. Bottom line, the tribulation is about to start. Jesus Christ is about to come. He could very well come like this week at the Feast of Tabernacles. Do we know for sure? No. Because he didn't tell us for sure. Because if he had told us for sure, instead of say, watch, because I'm going to show you things, not watch, because I'm not going to show you anything. Does that make sense? No, it makes no sense at all. Watch because I'm going to show you things. Okay. So, um, if he's, if he's telling us to watch, okay. If he had told us, okay, I'm coming exactly at this time on this day at this year. And he had told everyone, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be searching out a matter or uh or they wouldn't feel motivated to even you gotta you gotta occupy and redeem the time too you gotta occupy and redeem the time you gotta live like you're gonna be here for a while and yet you have to believe god and hear in the spirit and be open to what he's telling you and watch for the lord while we're still here taking care of business watching for the lord and i'm i'm gonna tell you something as hard as it's been it's been totally amazing. You know, the Bible says when you watch for the Lord, it actually purifies your, your hoping gives up. The Bible says hope purifies the soul. So when you're watching and waiting and hoping for the Lord, you're actually purifying your soul. Looks like I'm reached my recording limit, but I'm glad that they've changed it to a half hour because it was five minutes. And